Jeopardy! Today on Channel 4. Guess what the number one hobby in the United States is? It's the same hobby, number one, in New Orleans, and that's gardening. And whether or not you have one solitary potted plant in your apartment or a whole backyard full of vegetables, you have a relationship with the good earth. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And who best to talk about this but our own area agent with the Louisiana Cooperative Extension Service, Dan Gill, our wonderful friend. <laughs> What is, what is the bond that people have with plants? It's, um, it's strong. Um, it's, it's something that I think that we identify with comfortably. There's something about having plants around us that, that makes us feel secure. Uh, earlier in the century when, when we took all the plants out of our homes and didn't really have plants around us, I think there was a sense of insecurity and we saw this back to nature sort of trend. You go into any mall now and those huge lush rainforests they create in the malls to make you feel comfortable uh, are, are, are very psychologically sound. We do feel comfortable around plants. It's like there is life instead of a, just a steel structure. There's there's, I want to say human, but it's really, it's plant. It, there's a and feeling of life. And we've always been around plants. Plants have fed us, they have sheltered us, they have clothed us, they have done everything for us through our entire history. So I think that bond is, is very much because of that long association we have with them. You have been with the uh, Louisiana Cooperative Extension Service for a number of years. I know you have gotten incredible phone calls from people. This guy is a walking encyclopedia of information, therefore people call him. What some of the strangest calls you've ever gotten? Oh, uh, <laughs> a lady called me up one time. Um, she was looking for a, the, uh, some black olives. She was going to have a party and wanted some black olives <laughs> for a party. So she said, I've, I've, I've gone a couple of stores in my neighborhood. I can't find black olives, but I got a jar of green olives. So I was wondering if I took those and put them in a bag like I do an avocado, will they ripen and turn <laughs> black for me? <laughs> well, I said, if you leave them in the bag long enough, they'll turn black. <laughs> We're talking dry rot. We're talking right? about, and, and you know, it's, it, it, uh, it sort of makes sense in a, in a way, but no, it wouldn't have worked. Uh, people have uh, a lot of problems with, uh, with pests, and, and what's your pest is, is uh, what somebody else's pest is. And uh, recently I got a call from a gentleman, uh, and he had uh, called me up and he said, I've got a big problem. He said, I've got frogs in my front yard. And I said, all right. And uh, most people like frogs. They eat bugs. They're, they're, they're great in the landscape. Well, he said, I, I just don't, they're too many. I said, well, how many? It's seven or eight. Just too many frogs are in my landscape. I said, well, there's not a big problem there. Well, none of my neighbors have frogs. And what are my neighbors going to think if they see all these frogs in my landscape? What if I step on one? So, so there's nothing you can do for frogs except sort of live with them. So part of what I do is help people in an urban situation also adjust to the fact that even though we live in a city, there's a lot of things that we have to coexist with in nature. Do you ever face um, a person calling saying, my grandmother told me to do so and so, and you know that it won't work like that? Yeah. The old wives tales. You have to be gentle because these are, sometimes these are traditions that have been passed down from generation to generation. And remarkably, uh, many of them have some sort of horticultural foundation to them. And if they do, I'll say, listen, that would sort of work, and this is why, and, and tell them, you know, a realistic reason why. But when somebody says, you know, I heard that if I walk out and roll up a newspaper and slap my peach tree around with it, it'll make it bare for me. Or, uh, or uh, uh, oh, listen, my, my pecan is sick. It just doesn't look right. If I nail nails around the tree into it, I heard that, uh, that it'll do a lot better. Well, obviously, some of these things aren't going to work. And when they don't work, then I have to tell people, this isn't going to work. And, and this is why. I mean, how would you like it if somebody bashed you with a newspaper <laughs> or drove nails into you? Think about it. Uh, and, uh, but on the other, people say, uh, my grandmother used to throw the dishwater out on the plants. And uh, soap actually has strong insecticidal properties. And it does help keep the bugs away. In fact, they're insecticidal soaps that have been specifically designed to do that now. But will so, it kill the grass? That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Guy says, if I put Tide out, 
my neighbor told me to put Tide out for chinch bugs. So I went and got four boxes of Tide, sprinkled it all over my front yard, and I found out that uh, my grass was brown the next day. <laughs> so you've got And the chinch bugs were having a big party. Oh, they, so. they, well, they moved in the neighbor's yard that told them to do that, I imagine. So you've got to be careful with some of these home remedies, too. And, and that is that, that you don't get a lot of specific advice with it. You say, do this, and nobody says, do it in this amount or that amount. So it's a good idea to check uh, before you sure. plunge right into these things. Well, let me tell you, I think if nothing else, we're going to start a society for the prevention of peach tree abuse <laughs> <laughs> after what you're telling you us. We're going to come back, and Dan Gill is going to talk about the sex life of plants. Thousands of miles away, a vast canopy of trees is burning at the rate of 50,000 square miles a year. And unless the destruction is halted, New Orleans' own future could go up in smoke. Join Garland Robinette as he travels through Central and South America to bring home our Rainforest Connections, an Eyewitness News special report, Wednesday night, October 25th at 8 on Channel 4. This is me, Jennifer Shaben, before Nutrisystem. And this is me now. I lost 80 pounds and I feel terrific. I was euphoric. It felt great. I'm in a size 10 and it fits. I used to run from mirrors and now I actually look for them and stop and look and say, that's a pretty girl in there. And that's me. Lose up to 50 pounds for $89. Call 888-8200 now for details. I don't believe it. In here? Introducing Puffs Plus with aloe. Aloe! 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 You're kidding. In the tissue. So you've got the aloe in the lotion, you've got the lotion in the tissue, and you've got your nose that doesn't burn. We put aloe in the moisturizing lotion in new Puffs Plus, and it's unscented. Soothes my wounded nose. <laughs> Puffs Plus with aloe is less irritating than my regular tissue. New Puffs Plus with aloe. First aid for your sore nose. Ah. That's about it. Ah. You may never have thought you'd hear in daytime television us talking about the sex life of plants, but Dan Gill is going to tell us about that. There really is a sex life. There's a, a lot of se sex that goes on <laughs> in your garden. Uh, uh, the, the, it takes a little romantic mood from a bouquet of flowers to, to think of them as just being a collection of sex organs, but still in all, the flower that you see and that you marvel at is, is something the plant is producing strictly for reproductive purposes. Um, and plants are very diverse in, in, in how they structure their flowers and how they, how they structure their sexual organs. Uh, some plants have flowers that are, are perfect. They've got male and female parts all in the same flower. Other plants have male flowers and female flowers, and uh, it just it just is, is a tremendous diverse. Uh, well, let's way talk of about the it. the third party, the bee that arrives. <laughs> People forget about that. We got to have the bees. Oh, it's very important. Some called me up one time. They had some squash plants that weren't weren't producing. Squash is one of those plants that has male and female flowers. The bees have to carry the pollen, the male parts, from the male flowers to the female flowers. If that doesn't happen, no fruit forms. Only the female flowers form the fruit. This person was saying, well, I don't have any bees in my garden. I said, well, what you do is you get a paintbrush, and you go to the male flower, and you pick up a little of the pollen off the male flower, and you go uh -huh. over the female flower, and you put the pollen into the female flower. And I said, this is very important. While you're doing it, you've got to go bzzz. <laughs> And, they, and so I could see them in their garden. I didn't, I didn't say anything. I, I could see them in their garden going <laughs> So you didn't know Dan Gill was a wild and crazy guy, did you? You have a question. Yes, I'd like to know if it's uh, possible to overwater a cactus to kill it. I actually have about the only fiancé that I know that has killed a cactus. Uh, she has killed the cat. Well, the, th the art of growing plants, and growing plants is, is an art. And you aren't born with a green thumb. You, you sort of empathize with plants. You learn what you can about them, and, and you handle them. Cacti are from very arid regions. And growing a plant successfully means growing it in the way that it was, it was adapted to grow originally. So when you're growing a plant that's from an arid region, water it sparingly. Water it thoroughly when you water it, and then let it get fairly dry before you water it again. If you have it in a container with no drainage, holes and, and, you, and you water it a whole lot, it gets too much water and it'll die. Yes, ma'am. My question has more to do with reproduction. Okay. 
I bought, I bought one artichoke plant because I was curious to see how it grew. And the instruction, I called the extension service and the man said, uh, don't cut your plant down, wait until it makes a sucker for next year. But I didn't get any. Can you tell me why? Uh, the, the artichokes don't grow very well here, so you kind of had a, a, this, the, the deck was loaded against you. Um, they don't do very well. What happens is if you've ever grown a bromeliad and, and, and plants, they'll send up little bitty shoots from their base. Those are called suckers. Um, artichokes do sucker, and you've got to wait to cut the original plant back that dies after production. It dies all the way back to the ground. These suckers come up and carry on the next generation. Um, that's why he said don't cut it back until you see the suckers. Your poor plant just said, I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. I give up, and it died before it, it was able to make any And suckers. I'm no sucker. That's and what I'm he said. No sucker. <laughs> You know, you brought up a good point. We are so fortunate, we have said this a thousand times, to have the planting season we do in our area. But there are things that won't grow here. Well, what are some of them? Well, I, I guess the plants that people cry to me about the most, and especially people who come down here from up north, uh, are lilacs and peonies. Mm -hmm. And exquisitely wonderful plants. If we could grow them, it'd be great. But we've got camellias. We've got mm -hmm. azaleas that are so gorgeous in the crepe springtime. Crepe myrtles. When we have the crepe myrtle, which is the most outstanding flowering tree in the entire world. So for what you, what you have to give up, you, you get a lot of things. We have a wonderfully unique climate here. Um, I have a question. I have a ficus tree, which is a household plant, and I've heard that it's very sensitive and you're not supposed to move it, so yeah. I haven't done that. And I water it just about once a week, but it, it still drops a lot of leaves. How and long I have just, you had it? I've had it for about six months. And it's still dropping a lot of leaves? A lot of leaves. Does it have any left? <laughs> yeah, it has a few. <laughs> um, you may not be giving it enough light. Uh, when they won't adapt, when they won't stop dropping their leaves, because they always drop a few leaves, it scares you half to death, but if they adapt, they usually will adapt after about six to eight weeks, maybe uh, two months. So um, if it hasn't adapted by now, it's probably not getting enough light. See if you can shift it to a window, closer to a window, or to a window that gets more light. Plants live off of light. Light is what plants eat. It's what they create their food from. They don't give it, get enough light. It's like you have it on a starvation diet. So, so I would try to increase the light for it. Like filtered light or direct sunlight? Direct sunlight. A window inside the light is a lot dimmer. A window that gets some direct sun is fine for the, uh, for the uh, uh, ficus. You know, Dan, we, uh, I made sort of an informal little uh, questioning around to the staff, and I said, you know, if you were going to ask Dan Gill something, what would it be? That is the question. These ficus just keep dropping leaves. How can we make it happy? I think it brings up the point that if we think a tree like that or a bush is sensitive, then what about all these other plants who are so hardy and just <laughs> can handle any kind of it's, it's, it's re Think about how you'd feel if you, were, if you were taken from widely different conditions and from the, from the nursery to the house to, to all over the place. You'd never tolerate Plants are remarkably tolerant, but the thing is, is to, to try to moderate that as much as possible. Ficus will always drop their leaves because they've gone through a lot before you ever get them, but they should settle down within a, a few weeks or a couple of months. And if they haven't, you're not giving it the right growing conditions, and you need to adjust that. Some direct sun through the window would be great. But you are not a failure as a parent to a plant. No, just, just <laughs> keep it up. We're going to come right back, and Dan's going to show us a little bit of his garden. Very little. What gift for men is back, and better than ever? Oh, he'll love it. He's not the easiest person to shop for. Oh, picky. He is so picky. You should have seen his face when he got it last year. He loves it. Definitely getting it again. Last year, I got him a sweater. Did he like it? Well, let's just say he'll like this even more. <laughs> These shoppers have already discovered the hottest gift for men this Christmas. It's a terrific new video cassette presented by Sports Illustrated. Oh, yeah. Super Duper Football Follies. Super Duper Football Follies. The Super Duper Football Follies. It's 51 minutes of hilarious football follies. Fun, including a bunch of brand new super bloopers you won't find anywhere else. I mean, I even liked it, and I'm not what you call a humongous sports fan. It's perfect. I just couldn't believe it was free. It's free? You get the Super Duper Football Follies free with your paid gift subscription to Sports Illustrated. SI and the video? Who wouldn't want that? Just called them up. One call and you were done? Yeah. Call their toll-free Christmas hotline now and get the gift everybody's talking about. The free video and a full year of America's number one sports magazine. All at a low Christmas sale price. Only $1.19 per issue. That's over 55% off the cover price. That's before Christmas? Worked for me. 
He'll enjoy 54 issues, including the exclusive previews, the Sportsman of the Year, plus SI's giant 35th anniversary issue with over 300 pages of covers, photos, and memories. It's yours, free. And of course, the incredible 1990 swimsuit issue with the year's hottest swimsuits. My brother loved it. He said, Beth, this is great. And am I going to get the one with the bathing suits? He did? Yeah, he did. Brothers, fathers, husbands, boyfriends is perfect for any guy. There's even a card for under the tree. A full year of Sports Illustrated for only $1.19 per issue. And you won't be billed till next year. Save over 55% and get the videotape free. Just call their toll-free Christmas hotline. Too big, too small. I don't like the color. I won't have to deal with any of that. I have this one aunt who every year, without fail, gives me underwear. Underwear. I tell her, I would love Sports Illustrated. I'm cool with the underwear. For free tickets, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Angela Tickets, 1024 North Rampart, New Orleans, 70116. We tape our shows each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 1.30 and 3 o'clock. Please indicate which day and show you'd like to attend and include a daytime phone number where you can be reached. There's a maximum of four tickets per request. Please allow a week for delivery. And for upcoming show topics, call 592-1918. AT&T would like you to see long distance in a whole new light. Because day after day, night after night, only one company offers so many ways to save. AT&T. So you can run four miles in the time I run two. I can still beat you in a quarter mile. Mm -hmm. Driving, maybe. Uh, listen, what do you think about handling this with a conference call? With the AT&T Reach Out America Great. plan, you can save on long distance 24 hours a day and get the same service and quality oh, you've come to rely on. No. Oh, my uh, assistant just brought me a copy of the budget. Hi, Grandma. Yes, I'm fine, and so is Harry. <laughs> if you thought you had to lower your standards to lower your long-distance bill, AT&T has news for you. For just eight seventy dollars a month, the AT&T Reach Out America plan gives you a full hour of night and weekend calls, plus a discount on your daytime calls, and on top of our already reduced evening rates, a 20% discount. To order, call 1-800-638-4100. But the real shock was the leading man, Norman. <laughs> Norman, that's Finley good from the AV class. I don't believe it. Oh, no, no, it's true, but he's changed. Really good looking. Why not sign up right now and save $5? I'll be there tomorrow. You can even get an option that lets you use your plan away from home. Call 1-800-638-4100. Order now and save $5 on the AT&T Reach Out America plan. Find out how you can save on long distance 24 hours a day. AT&T, the right choice. Does Dan Gill come empty-handed? No, he brings some of his garden. I wanted to say very little of your garden. This is an adorable plant, though. This is a bonsai. It's a bonsai, uh, and it, uh, it's, it's a, a, a beautiful way of, of having something uh, that's, that's an art form and something alive to take care of also. Uh, but but tougher than you think, I think. Well, bonsai aren't something that you just water and, 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 and ignore, sort of, and provide the normal things for it. It requires very careful attention, very careful training. It is an art form. Like any art form, it takes some, sure. some learning, the rules, dedication to, to maintaining Patience. it. Patience. Patience. But that's a little plant that I dug up just a few weeks ago. Very briefly, because I know a lot of people would like to know, were you born knowing about plants? <laughs> You know, my earliest memory, my, my father was, was stationed at, uh, at Jackson Barracks uh, when I was in the first grade. My earliest memory of, of being interested in plants is, is six years old, and I would go out into the woods and find these wild lady slippers. They're balsam, but people here call them lady slippers. And they were various colors, and I would find unusual colors and dig them up and bring them home and grow mm. them in pots. So. In high school, when you said uh, when I said I wanted to be a horticulturist, it was sort of embarrassing <laughs> uh, because not everybody knows what that means. But uh, it's it's been a long-standing interest. Dan, uh, it's a nice-sounding word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, I have a brown spot in my grass that is getting bigger every day. A round brown spot. 
Well, it's St. Augustine grass. There's, there's a, a, a good question there because everybody has a lawn and almost everybody has a problem on occasion. Uh, there are two major reasons why lawns will begin to turn brown. Either fungal diseases would attack the lawn or you may have an insect problem. Unfortunately, the treatment is very different from either of those, so you have to diagnose the problem accurately. Unless there's some real distinguishing characteristic that usually requires a sample being sent into my office and letting me take a look at it. Right now, chinch bugs are active and fungal diseases are active, and I couldn't tell you exactly which one it is because they both produce essentially the same uh, symptoms. You need to call me at my office. And, and that's a free service. Oh, yes. It's a free service and the testing. Uh, one of our camera guys said, I have a crisis. I have mole crickets. Big thing happening in Slidell area, he says. Yeah, the mole crickets are a big problem. There's some good granular insecticides that you can apply. And once again, for, for specific recommendations and diagnoses like that, we have a pathology lab that we can submit samples to. I have a lot of resources at my beck and call that help me out to help you out. Uh, so when you have a situation like that, certainly contact your local extension service. Let me service. tell you, I have said this ever since you and I have worked together on the Good Earth that our, some of our best tax dollars are spent the most accurately through the Louisiana Cooperative Extension Thank Service. You. So many services you have help people, whether it's something like this or how do I grow vegetables or just to make fun of Dan. It's good comic <laughs> relief. <laughs> uh, what is the correct botanical name of the shrub with the red tips and when is the proper time to trim it? The uh, shrub with the red tips is, is a Photinia, Photinia fra mm -hmm. fraseri. It's a hybrid between Photinia seriolata and Photinia glabra. Have I impressed you? <laughs> <laughs> the Fraser's Photinia is a very popular hedge plant to use here because when you shear it back and you get that flush of new growth coming out, it's a bright carmine red color that's really attractive. Easy to take care of. The color red is more pronounced if you grow it in a sunnier situation. And don't be afraid to shear it. The more you shear it, the bushier it is, the denser the hedge will be, which is what you've usually planted planted it for and the more colorful new growth you're going to get. Boy, that is scary when you cut though. You think, oh, it's not going to come back. It's not going to come back. <laughs> it takes guts with scissors and shears, etc. We are having sort of a, a, a public awareness or more of a consciousness as consumers about pesticides, the use of pesticides. There's even talk that some national grocery stores are going to really put the heat on to have vegetables and fruits that don't have pesticides. Your thoughts on that? Well, there are, I guess, two basic philosophies when it comes to, to the use of pesticides. That, that all pesticides are harmful in any way whatsoever and that they simply cannot be safely used at all. The other philosophy is that, that pesticides can be used safely and can benefit us, but they have to be used properly, they have to be monitored properly and carefully. I belong to the second philosophy. I feel that pesticides have, have benefited us tremendously, but like all things that we use, medicines that we take, or, or household cleaners that we use to mop our kitchen floor, all of these things are potentially harmful if they are abused or used incorrectly. So. I basically tell people, don't run out at the first sign of some bug that you see flying around your yard and grab the most toxic pesticide you can. Throw an arbitrary amount of it in, in a gallon of water and slosh it all over the place. Use pesticides uh, properly. Follow the label directions very carefully. But I, I really believe that uh, the pesticides, balance. that there is a balance there and that they have been very beneficial to us, but we just need to be very careful and look at them very carefully. Uh, you talk about things flying around in your yard. I always thought I was a very uh, humane person, but if I could have wrung the necks of each of those buck moth caterpillars <laughs> in my yard, could barely open my gate, I was so afraid, because they would be dropping. But that is an example of how neighborhoods got together to get rid of it. All of a sudden, I mean, it's only been in the last couple of years, where did these guys come from? Actually, actually, I, I, the, the, they have been increasing in numbers for about the past eight years and usually nature tends to reassert itself in a balance wise and you get uh, big population increases and then crashes in this case we had a, an increase that kept on going on and on and on until it was unbearable mm -hmm. uh, and fortunately this past year we did notice finally a reduction probably both because of the careful treatments that were made and also because they are uh, are just sort of going down naturally i think Okay, we have also here another expert, Paul Soniat with the Botanical Garden at City Park. That's right. And uh, you and Dan are like uh, frickin' frack. I'm telling yeah. you, they're like joined at the hip. <laughs> but Dan has done a tremendous amount for the Botanical Garden with his volunteer group. Well, Dan has been so instrumental in helping us in, in a lot of ways. One with the volunteer program you're talking about. And it really happened when, when we were at the Botanical Garden trying to develop a volunteer program with very few on the staff to help run it. And I went with, to Dan and asked him what he felt about it. And the Extension Service more or less loaned 
Dan Gill to us a half a day a week uh, for the last, what, three years, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he works there every Tuesday with a, a crew of volunteers, and they've been with him, some of those people, since he started. And it's just grown and grown and grown every year. In addition to that, uh, he, he works a lot with educational programs on uh, Sundays for us and also helps us with Christmas in the Oaks. So he's all, and he also has Mr. his office Energy. in City <laughs> Park, so uh, he's right near us. But I think that's very important that if you want to know more about gardening, first of all, you can call Dan if you have specific questions, but they do have this terrific volunteer group over at the Botanical Garden, and you learn from Dan. I mean, these are sometimes very experienced gardeners who just know, want to know more, and this is the guy to do it. That's right. And a lot of times he'll take the volunteers and they'll work a few hours. Then he'll sit them all down, just like he's doing today, <laughs> and give them, uh, you know, more or less whole court. And every, every Tuesday he'll talk on a different subject. So the people do hands-on work and then they have instruction. And if they have any specific questions, he's there to answer it. The biggest mistake people make in their gardens. Oh, the biggest mistake Steak. people make in their gardens is putting the wrong plant in the wrong place putting the wrong plant in the wrong place. And that, that covers everything. You put a plant that you only wanted to be this big in a spot and it gets to be 18 feet tall. That is a big mistake and it's, it's a mistake you can't easily correct because you start <laughs> fighting the plant. I want you to be this big and it's saying, I want to be this big. So then it's prune it back and it grows up again, prune it back. Uh, or you put a, a plant that likes the shade in a spot that likes the sun. If you put a plant in the wrong spot, it won't be happy and you won't be happy. The more you think about what does this plant need and where am I going to put it before mm -hmm. you actually plant it, the happier your landscape and you, you're going to be. Any other pearls of wisdom from the great Dan Gill? <laughs> Rely on your resources. Everybody cannot know everything. I don't know everything. And when I don't know something, I call somebody up and I find out. If you don't know something or if there's a problem in your landscape uh, and you don't know what to do about it, call on your resources. Talk to nurserymen, talk to me, talk to somebody, but, but find out what to do and your, your effort that you put into your yard and your garden is going to come back to you a whole lot more. Thank heaven for the good earth and thank heaven for Dan Gill. Thank you for joining us. And coming up on Eyewitness News at 5 o'clock, details about the reported landing gear problems on a Taka jet over New Orleans today. NASA will try to launch the shuttle Atlantis tomorrow after scrapping today's blast-off due to bad weather. And opponents of shell dredging in Lake Pontchartrain say it is killing the lake. These stories and more news in 30 minutes. Hope to see you then.